Okay, sorry, <laughs> I accidentally finished the live video stream by accident, so sorry. Um, I also want to give a special thanks out to my family for um, their support this past year and all of my sisters, uh, my literal twin sister, of course, my parents, um, my son, my husband, for all their help and support, uh, but also uh, my sisters, Wendy, Leona, Aime, April, uh, all of you have been super instrumental in helping this work evolve and um, I'm super grateful. Okay, so I'm going to attach this to my tripod. So bear with me for a second here while I get this ready. I promise I won't hit the finish button again. Can you really promise on that? Okay. Great. So joining me is my son Mac. Hello, internet. Okay, so before we begin, uh, we're going to do a smudge because I find that when you're working with clay, it's very important to uh, be in a good place and a good mind, body, and spirit. Did you want to? Oh, crap. I'm never good at this. That's okay. Take your time. Um, yeah. Oh, do you want me to do it? Okay, so um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about um, Indigenous pottery just really quickly. I've been talking a little bit about it in previous live episodes just to gear up for this. Um, so uh, my ancestors uh, created um, pottery using the clay from the land because there used to be an ancient lake called Lake Agassiz um, due to the uh, melting of the glaciers. And so Winnipeg is right in the bottom of the lake bed basically. And so you can dig in Winnipeg and like Porters of Prairie, um, one of the edges of the shorelines because Lake Agassiz changed a lot one of the shorelines um, was close to uh, Brandon. So half of Brandon was a shoreline. The other half was like underwater. So basically you can dig almost all of Manitoba and you can get clay. Some have more clay and some have more sand. Um, I often harvest clay up at my parents' place and it looks like this, um, this coloring and it uh, has a lot of sand in it, which makes it hard to, to uh, work with because it, it has a tendency to fall apart. Uh, the clay here in Manitoba, uh, I harvest some from my backyard and it's very sticky. So I need to um, add materials to it. So the clay from Lake Agassiz, the ancestors, what they did was they would collect this clay and they built vessels with it. And I'm going to show you one of the first vessels I made. Uh, a lot of this knowledge I got from Grant Golds. Um, he's an experimental archaeologist and he's just a curious mind. He has a lot of respect for indigenous technologies. So uh, him and his wife were curious as to how to, how these vessels were created. And so uh, he started investigating on how it was made and he came up with these theories and uh, it was backed up with uh, Dr. Lee Sims 
the previous uh, curator, head archaeologist at the Manitoba Museum. And uh, what, they, what they realized was, um, let me take one of these shards here. What they noticed was um, that these shards had like markings on it. And what Grant kind of figured was that perhaps they took fibrous materials and made, it, made these kind of stretched bags. This is a twist bag and uh, it stretches and it matches the markings that were on the outside of these vessels. So um, the idea being is that these can help hold the shape of the vessel and prevent cracking from happening. And so the first vessel I ever made was um, with granite golds using the clay down in Minnesota. And um, I made the vessel and then brought it over um, to Manitoba and then fired it in my parents' um, fire pit. Um, I put fat inside to season it. And uh, you can see the lines. I was using one of Grant's bags and using the techniques that Grant was showing us. So this is, this is uh, one, of the, one of the first vessels I've ever made. Okay, so what I wanna do with everybody today is I want to um, make uh, a smudge bowl and hopefully uh, when sometime during the summertime, uh, perhaps you can do a pit firing to heat it up and basically walk in the footsteps of the ancestors. Okay, so the first thing we're, we're gonna do is uh, this is a grandfather stone. So this is was used in sweats. And then once it's done, uh, often people would put it into a pile. And if you look at the shards um, that I have, there's little specks inside and they look like broken up grandfathers. So um, it's thought that they crushed them up. And this is, this is um, I get this from Kevin Brownlee, who is now the head curator at the, the Manitoba Museum. It's thought that these are crushed grandfather stones from ceremony. So I think that's really beautiful that ceremony is now going into these vessels. So the, the memories, the, um, the knowledge from these grandfathers are going into your vessels, which I think is amazing. So um, we've done this ahead of time. We've crushed these grandfathers. So what we want to do is we want to take this strainer. And Mac, if you can do this for me, if you could uh, pour some of the pour some of that in here and just spread it around. What we want to do is we want to mix these grandfathers um, into the clay. The reason being is that if you don't do this, uh, clay is like really tight and water, um, there's a bit of moisture, no matter how dry it is, there's just a bit of moisture and there's air in there. And when you heat it up too quickly, uh, <coughs> what will happen is your pot, pressure will start building up and your pot will explode and you'll hear a pop when you're firing it. So to stop that from happening, we need the air and moisture to get out of the vessel. And when I say moisture, I mean really small amount of moisture. So um, while Max doing that, I also had uh, Josh, my husband, go out to the, um, this is another vessel of mine. I put a little turtle on it. This is made from the clay that uh, was picked up at my parents' place. So I had my husband go onto uh, the road, just out front here, and I asked him to uh, collect some sand. So all of Winnipeg has sand all over the place still. Okay, and put that in there. Okay, and then we're gonna add a little bit of sand because if you, this is 
This is a clay sample that I got from Grant Goltz, and you can see that the first layer is sand and stones, the second layer is silt, and then the third layer, this lighter layer here, that is um, clay. So you want to have a combination of clay, silt, sand, and the grandfathers. Okay. That's good. Okay, so now we're gonna add a little bit of sand as well. I don't wanna to add too much. Okay. And that dust that's coming up, that's clay. So don't shake it too much. Okay, that's good, that's good, that's good, that's good. Um, really important to note that uh, there's these stones that are kind of orangey. If you um, fire that at a certain temperature, it turn, I think it turns into lime. Um, so it turns into a powder and uh, your vessel will deteriorate, like certain parts of it will pop off. So this one had a lot of those little pebbles in it and there was like a blowout from it and it crumbled here on my rim. And this didn't happen until like weeks later. So also we are going to take, uh, here in Manitoba we get a lot of mollusk shells. Okay, so these are great tools by the way. I use these in building the vessels. So we take mollusk shells and you can um, crush it up and we're gonna put that into the vessels as well. I haven't experimented with it too much, but if you add too much, it's a bad thing. This is what Grant told me. But he thinks that uh, by adding the mollusk shell, um, it prevents bacteria growth. So I'm just gonna add a bit of this powder. These are mollusk shells that I've, I used. Mix that up, honey. Okay. Now I've been letting this clay dry. It's really, really sticky. So I'm gonna get that. Okay, you can probably see my fingernails are already super dirty. That's because I've been trying to wedge this clay to be a little bit drier. Okay, so now what Mac and I are gonna do is we're gonna wedge uh, all this material into the clay. So I have uh, a couple of friends, Ange, who uh, I taught a class at uh, Brandon University. Um, I invited her and her kids to participate. So um, she got some clay and some grandfathers. So what I want her to do is to start mixing in this material into her clay. Okay, Matt, you wanna do that with me now? Huh? We're gonna wedge this into, into here. Yeah. Okay, and also, my friend um, Chantel, I uh, brought over some clay for her and uh, asked her to do the same thing. Okay, we're gonna wedge some of this material into this really sticky clay. No, 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 Mac, don't do that. You're gonna spill it all over the place. Just put it up here and there you go. You don't need to make more of a mess than need to. Okay. All right, so wedge the clay like I am. It's kind of like kneading dough. Oh, let me make this a little bit clearer so you can see. Okay. So we're mixing it in. If you look at the um, if you look at the, if, if you ever have a chance to look at shards, um, you basically just have to go to any waterways in um, like river systems in Manitoba and um, especially say the white shell, you're gonna find clay shards and they're pretty easy to spot. On one side is um, kind of smooth and then on the outside, uh, it has that sort of um, string texture that I had been talking about earlier. 
and they kind of glitter in the sun. And the reason being is because of these grandfathers. These grandfathers like um, glitter. It's kind of cool. And uh, thanks, Angela had gone through um, this process as well when she was in university, taking my uh, traditional knowledge class, um, Indigenous Traditional Art. I uh, got her to um, do this very same thing. They made, they made vessels though, not just smudge bowls. How's it going? <laughs> Mac doesn't always like uh, getting his hands dirty. It's two, two, two. Is it? Yes. Okay, I don't know if you can see that, but I want to show Mac. <laughs> Mac, I think you need more, more stuff in it. Yeah. Keep going. We want to incorporate all this um, grandfathers and we want to incorporate the sand and the crushed mollusk shells just to get that. Ah, my hands are starting to hurt. Are they? Okay, do you want to switch? I have um, strong arms because of doing this kind of work. I have strong thumbs. You have strong thumbs because you play video games? Yes. Let's well, wipe people. Okay, now I want, what Mac is going to do now is he's going to make his into a ball. But actually, oh. you don't need this much clay, so we're going to just take half of this clay. I'd say that's about even. Okay, take that clay, and I want you to make it into a ball. Okay, so I'm gonna put that aside. Uh, let's lift this up a bit. No. <laughs> hard to say. Okay. <laughs> it's hard to do this. Okay, so. You want to make it into a ball. This is still really sticky, so I could make a very large vessel with this. Um, sorry, with this, this kind of clay. Okay, so you want to make a ball like this. Let's see, Mac. Wait. I don't always recommend doing it that way, but our clay is really wet, so the more he's spinning it and handling it, the drier it's becoming. So that's okay. Okay. Good. Okay, so now what you want to do is uh, if you're right-handed, you're going to hold your clay in your left hand. The opposite is true. If you are... Um, left-handed left you would hold the clay in your right hand okay so with your dominant hand you're going to put your thumb like this and you're going to press right into the center just a little bit okay then you're gonna spin it a little bit and press spin it a little bit in your hand and press spin it a little and press now here's something that I work with kids a lot and I tell uh, everybody the same thing I want people to look at their hands, the size and shape of their hands, okay? Size. And if you compare <laughs> Max and to mine, right? Mine is clearly different. He's got these long spindly little fingers, not little, big long fingers. And mine are clearly different. Even my thumbs, both of my thumbs, one is very different than the other. So, the, the object that you use on your body to, or the thing that you use on your body to uh, make a vessel is your, your hands, right? And if your hands are different than my hands, which they are, even identical twins may have the same shaped hands, but their minds and personalities are different. So when you're thinking about um, personality 
and you're thinking about the hands, uh, they're completely different. Can you just wait? I don't want you going too far ahead, okay? So, so each person is very different. Your hands are shaped differently. So that means that you can't look to the person next to you and expect that your piece is gonna look exactly the same. So people can't look to my work and expect uh, their work to look like mine because you just don't have the same shaped hands as me and you don't have my personality. I don't have your personality, so uh, every outcome is completely different. And uh, people who have like straight thumbs, mine is curved from years of making pinch, pinch pots. Um, yeah, one thumb is like much more curved than compared to the other. Uh, so that means that my inside is gonna look different than somebody whose thumbs are much more straight. So people whose thumbs are much more straight, you almost have to try to um, go straight down, but kind of wiggle it to kind of curve it while you're working. Okay, so you're spinning it and you're pressing your thumb in, turning, press your thumb, turning, press your thumb. And you wanna keep doing this until you get halfway down. Oh, crap. <laughs> okay, no, that's fine, that's halfway down. And it should look, when you get halfway down, it should look like a fat bowl, okay? Again, somebody with like a straighter um, piece, it'll probably be wider than mine. Yeah, go ahead. Don't do that, Mac, because you're gonna get clay on the ground. Go wash your hands. So Mac is, uh, will be back. But um, basically, so what you wanna do is, it looks like a fat bowl. That's the next step. So then the next step is having your hand like this, and you're basically doing like a puppet action, okay? Nice little kind of squeezing motions, okay? So you're gonna put your thumb all the way in, and then you're going to give a gentle squeeze, okay? Then you're going to spin your clay vessel clockwise in your hand, just a little bit, and give another squeeze. Turn, squeeze, turn, squeeze, turn, squeeze, turn, squeeze. And basically that's what you're doing is you're turning and squeezing. Can you close the door, Mac? Turning and squeezing, turning and squeezing as you're going. That's it. Okay, now this is the difference between commercial clay and the clay that I collect from the land is that it cracks much easier. Oh wait, we need to make it bigger. Okay. Yeah, so Mac, what I was saying is you wanna turn and squeeze, turn and squeeze, yeah, just little by little, and just keep doing that. Don't worry about the cracks, we will address them, we'll fix them, okay? And uh, sorry, I haven't been able to answer anybody's questions. Um, I'm hoping my friend Angela, if her hands aren't too dirty, that she can do that. Why did I see so many questions about my hair? Uh, was it was it your cousin Emily or Papa? I, I saw Papa was online, and you know now your auntie's online. Okay. So this is mine so far, okay, and I can keep going hair. thinner. Now I'm switching my hand because. Um, it's now a little bit more open. I'm not too worried about the cracks at the moment. I can fix them. Okay. Now, since this is a smudge bowl, it's okay to have the bottom a little bit thicker. I want to show you quickly while Mac is still working um, and I'll eventually get back to mine too. So um, at the Manitoba Museum, there's this there's several examples where um, there are little tiny clay vessels that are crudely made and one of them looks like this. So basically what it is, it looks like a child was given some clay and was just mimicking what the women were doing because it 
it's believed that this was um, a woman's endeavor. This is one of her things that she did. And so you can see a child with a piece of clay holding in their hand and then taking their thumb and pushing it in and creating this cute little piece, right? And then you'll notice that the vessel has these little markings. They basically look like that. So the, the thinking is, is that they took um, a stick um, maybe not like this, but I have a barbecue skewer, but imagine this is actually a stick and then they poked it, not all the way through, but the vessels that uh, the ancestor made, can you thin it just at the bottom a little bit more? Okay, so the, the vessels that the ancestors made, I'll show you. There are these called punctates and uh, they're pressed in. And on the inside, you can see they come out like a pregnant bellies, um, like a, a, a woman who's pregnant. If you look at her belly button, it comes out like that. So there's a lot of references to um, women, uh, pregnant women, uh, um, uh, women are considered water carriers. Uh, it's their responsibility to care for water. And that is because we carry a lot of water when we are um, carrying a child. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Auntie. Okay. And uh, you'll notice that there's these markings here. Okay. And um, one of, um, I guess, a grad student with uh, Kevin Brownlee. She had noticed that he had made this tool. This is a, a deer bone. And uh, he took spruce root and wrapped this for me. And if you look at how oh, no. these markings were made, um, it, it looks like this is the kind of tool that they used. And um, this looks like an umbilical cord, like the wrapping of an umbilical cord. So anyways, so this is, uh, there's a lot of female references in here. And then you would take this and uh, you can either use a shell. So we think that they might've used um, a shell from the coast. There's a lot of trading that happened east to west coast, north to south throughout North America. So I'm just gonna show that design a little bit better. And so this marking right at the top, right here, the up and lower part, I used a shell. And then this is the wrapped umbilical cord or the bone piece that uh, Kevin Brownlee made for me. Okay, moving on. So now we're going to get to the point where we decorate and then Mac can go hang out with his friends online. Yes. Okay, that's beautiful, honey. Yes. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to smooth the top. Smooth. Okay, so you're going to just take your finger. Smooth. Smooth. Yeah. Now our clay is really sticky and it's super easy to do this. I'm just wondering how um, Chantelle and Ange are doing with the clay that I gave them, because um, it's the clay that I used from, it's the clay that I used, uh, that I harvested from the beach area up near Albert Beach, Smooth. the Travers Bay area. Oh, keep going, just a little bit more. And then you can decorate it, okay? All right, uh, can you use water to smooth? Yes, if your piece is too dry, um, you can take a bit of water, so we have a bit of water here, and you can wet the top. My sister actually uh, came, with, came to uh, the water gathering last year, and I was doing this uh, workshop, and 
she discovered that actually what's better than water is spit. Ew. <laughs> Max said ew. Um, yeah, so actually uh, spit is a good lubricant for, and it holds the clay better. By the way, when we were in art school, bacteria is really good for clay because what happens is um, the bacteria becomes another layer to like hold the clay together and prevent cracking from happening. So some students, um, uh, some students would take apple juice, but I even heard some students would pee in their clay to Woo! make it uh, the bacteria to grow fast. Woo! So aged clay is great. Um, smoothing, not soothing. What? Sorry, I can't read that. Smoothing, not shooting. Okay. Don't quite know what that means, but... You said shooting. Uh, you said smoothing. Did I? Yeah. Oh. Who's on first? Sometimes I'm not aware of... Oh, there's Leanne. She's one of my uh, sisters from the I'm water gathering. Oh. Uh, gonna miss it this year. I wanna make sure that the elders are safe. To be so. honest. So this is my vessel. It's starting to look really nice. Uh, like I said, if you want to try it, I highly recommend it. Uh, it. It actually works really nice. It is instead of using water to smooth, you can spit it. Uh, here's the thing about uh, clay and water. If you add too much water, so often kids will do this. They'll just like wet the, their hands and they smooth it and it looks like it's smoothing. But when you saturate too much water, um, then your vessel can't hold itself together. Uh, no clapping, because it puts dust in here. Um, so what happens is, uh, I don't even know, what, what was I saying? <laughs> you got me like, what was I talking about? No, I, I think I would be Make, Making the things too Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. If I had too much water, then then the vessels will collapse, and you don't want that to happen. Whoa, that's pretty ridiculous. Yeah. Okay. So once you get it to the shape that you want, I think what I'm gonna do is um. Yes. I think I'm going to um. I think I'm gonna draw something on the inside. I'm gonna do some of the the um, punctates, just like on these vessels, right? This, by the way, is an example of black deck pottery, with the exception of the turtles. They didn't have turtles like that on it. I, I just thought it would be a really cute addition to it. Okay, Matt. You're gonna take this and, and you're gonna decorate it. it. No, don't stop it. Okay, I've got to decorate it. And if you look, you'll see. You can see the um, the grandfather stones glistening. Okay, and uh, it looks very much like looks very much like the pottery shards that I have. You can see how much um, grandfathers are in this one. And then what I like to do also, like um, just to make it look pretty, is to take um, the shell and when it starts to, to um, dry out a bit more and stiffen up, I like to smooth it on the inside with this pottery, uh, sorry, with this shell. And then once it starts to get what's called leather hard, leather hard is um, a term where it feels like leather. Then when you get to that point, then you take a rock, a very smooth rock. I have a couple in here that I've used over the years. That I've found going on walks and stuff up at the beach. This is a nice one. 
you basically um, smooth it on the inside with the rock. And what that does is it causes the um, dust particles, the molecules to like- I get it. Really become tight, like super tight like that. And it becomes smooth and shiny and it's really, really pretty. I did it. Great. Now, I want you to um, put your name. Where did you Where did you decorate? Oh, okay. Okay, draw something on the inside. Mac. Uh, yeah, if you want to put your name. And make sure that it sits so that it sits on the land and it doesn't wobble too much because it's a smudge bowl, right? Um, yeah, so I'm not going to be able to show you guys, but... Um, basically within today you can um, take a smooth rock or you can even use your finger I've done that as it's drying and it's no longer uh, sticking to your hand um, you can smooth it with your finger and just rub it until it's um, smooth and shiny and then let it dry don't put it in the sun, just let it dry naturally. I like to turn mine upside down there. so that the bottom dries evenly. Okay, thanks Mac. If you want, you can wash your hands here and then use this to wipe it oh, and then go to the bathroom and then wash your hands properly. Okay, um, I'm gonna continue uh, decorating this, this little guy. I'm gonna work on it. Um, if you notice, it's kind of thick. Again, that's because it's a smudge bowl. But if I were to make a vessel just like the ancestors, it's amazing how thin, see how thin that is? Yes. The vessels were very, very thin. So they were able to work it really. Um, bye. bye, honey. Thanks for your help. Okay, here's another one. Look how thin that is. My friend Noah, he knows how difficult this is because I've had him, uh, uh, he's been working with clay and he's been making vessels. And uh, I think his are thicker than this, but um, there's a level of sophistication and um, a real understanding of the medium. Uh, Matt, can you close the door please? Matt, close the door, you're making too much noise. Thank you. Okay, so, um, anything I want to add? Um, I just wanna say uh, thank you everybody who um, participated today. Um, I think what I'm going to do is uh, on my own Facebook page show how to do a firing um, out on the land. Uh, the great thing is that it only takes about an hour and a half to two hours to do. It's very quick and um, it really just comes down to um, the type of wood that you're burning and like the size of the wood. Uh, I'll have to show all of that. Um, and it's really cool, once it's fired, you can start using it right away. Okay, so I'm gonna keep working on this. Um, please check out the exhibition. I know I showed people um, bits of the artwork. Uh, you can just go on the AGSM website agsm.ca and watch the videos at your leisure. The videos have Sherry Kopanis um, speaking. She's responding to the artwork and she's responding with um, water knowledge. And you may not know what she's talking about because uh, if you don't speak um, the Ojibwe language, but you can feel the knowledge kind of flowing through you. So, um, like I said, you can access it um, 
Actually, I'm gonna see if Alyssa wants to join. Let's see if we can add her. I don't know if we can. Uh, no, that's inviting friends to watch. Okay, well anyways, uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for being part of the, this process. If you have any questions about your vessel, um, I will answer it in the comments below. So I will look over your comments, which I wasn't able to answer, mostly because my hands are filthy. Um, but uh, I will answer any questions that you may have. Great. Okay. Echo Sunny.